If you have a 50 and you're fishing shallower, that'd be fine, but an 80 is perfect. As far as the drag, if you look at the side of the spool here, you're going to see numbers there. What that means is when I push that lever to that certain line, I know exactly how much drag is there. So when you look at this reel, and as I'm fighting, you're going to see me fight a sword, and I'm going to be pushing the drag up, I'm going to be backing it off, I'm going to let them run. But if I don't pull my drags, meaning pulling the line out so I know exactly how much drag I have on the reel, you can end up having too much drag or not enough drag to lose the fish. So again, my manual hand crank is a Tiagra 80 wide as far as the rod goes. What you're looking at is a relatively short rod. It's about a six foot rod. It's got fast action, meaning it, it bends in the tip. So it bends in the tip, but it's got a lot of backbone on this end. So I get, it's a little forgiving up there. These things start swatting. You're going to see this rod kind of buckle under the, the swat of a swordfish, and then it'll back, it'll, it'll stop loading down in here. As far as the guides and stuff real quick on this rod, you got a, 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 a roller at the tip, you've got what's called a Winthrop top. Now that, that roller is actually built within the frame of the guide so that the braid cannot come off the top. All these other guides are ring guides. They're called silicone carbide guides. They're made for braid. That's what you want to use for daytime sword fishing rods. If you got all rollers, just be careful. This is the right rod, hand cranking for swordfish. Again, an 80, you don't know if your first one's going to be 80 pounds or 800. So, just remember, I can catch an 800 pounder on that rod. As far as our downrigger rod, Hooker Electric is what we choose to use. That's this particular rod here. Now, Hooker Electric, what you're looking at here is a, a mod uh, module that motor that comes off. I can pull these pins and actually take this motor off the reel, making it a manual crank. For this film, we're using the hooker as the downrigger. We're using it so that we're going to take a 15-pound lead, drop it to the bottom, and be able to retrieve it. So we're going to leave this on today, the actual the, the motor mechanism, and Again, it's attached to an 80. Now this has the same braid. 65 pound test is what's on here, high visibility. This particular rod's up to 7 feet. It's got more ass to it. It's a heavier duty rod. You're going to be dropping 15 pounds to the bottom. I need a rod that doesn't fold over and bend. I need it to be a little more rigid. So that's what you're going to see there. As far as the gear here, I still keep my 150 foot, 250 pound wind on, on the actual reel itself, but then at the end of this particular reel, show you what you got. And this is, this is where you need to pay attention. Here's your 250 pound that comes to a swivel, ball bearing swivel. Now, this is also 250 pound that runs to a clip. Now this clip, Take a good look at it. That clip is called a diesel clip, made for Australian fishermen pulling giant baits. The reason we're using the red clip, diesel clip, because we can get a lot of pressure out of it. I can get 10, 12 pounds out of this clip, meaning if I tighten this screw and I snap this down, it's giving me a lot of tension to be able to open. A general bl a black's clip, the black clips that you usually see on the outriggers, a lot of times aren't hardy enough or don't stand up to the salt and stuff when you drop this thing down 1,800 feet. So, again, there's your clip. We're going to set that clip at 10 pounds. So, when I say that, I know that by pulling on this with a piece of floss and a scale, I can set this to release at 10 pounds. Down from that, you lift it up. There's your 15 pound lead. 15 pound lead right at the base, and it's crimped on to that 250 pound. Starting at the bottom again, round lead is the best. 250 pound coming up six feet from that. There's your clip to your ball bearing swivel. That's the extent of it. Don't make it any more difficult than that. If you got if I got these two outfits with the bait. And the lead, we're good to go. You're going to see us do it now. That's the, that's, the, that's the tackle side of it. You don't need anything else other than that. You're going to watch us catch one right here. 
You're going and you're going, you're both going. Okay. So right now, basically what we're doing, the bait has been deployed. The loop is in the clip, the wax loop. Now it's no different than you were fishing in 100 feet of water, and that's the thing you got to remember here. Using a downrigger, whether it's 1,800 feet, 1,655 feet, or 60 feet, it's the same concept. The distance between the bait and the actual floss loop on the, on the wind-on lead is 150 feet. So that bait's way behind that actual clip. Now as we're fishing, just remember that the line for the bait is in the clip. So when you get a bite, in general, the bite is going to radiate through the downrigger rod. So the hooker rod is the one that we're using for the downrigger right now, is the one that's going to show the bite. So we're going to stare at that one. The one thing with this kind of fishing, though, because you're deploying two rods at the same time, you've got to have a driver, you've got to have a guy on the manual hand crank, and you have to have a guy on the downrigger rod. So that clip, again, set at about 10 pounds of pressure to be able to pop it out. You're snapping it in there. You're slowly... I'm slowly backing up, getting the rig, as you can see behind me, the angles going up in front of us. Small boat setup. If, if we were on a big boat right now, we'd be doing the same thing, but the rods could be separated a lot more. Right now, one of the things you want to be conscious of, the guy who is on the manual hand crank, you have to have the drag backed off enough so you don't snap it out of the clip. And the guy who's on... Seth, who's on the hooker electric on the downrigger rod, has got doesn't want to go to complete free spool. You want to take your time and get the thing down there. Once you've hit the bottom, remembering that both guys, when Seth decides to wind it up off the bottom, Max is going to have to wind with him, the guy on your your manual hand crank. So we're going to wind. You're going to hit the bottom. You're going to wind both up at the same time. So it does require two anglers to be able to do this. Not that, you know, if you really wanted to take your time and you had this dialed in to where it was set, you had your drag set perfectly, you could do it alone, but I would suggest if you're start, if you're trying to learn, get a guy like Max on a manual crank, a guy like Seth back here on the hooker electric, and you got two guys and everybody's paying attention, and the guy on the wheel is allowing them to be able to keep the angle out away from the boat. Now, that being said, people have a tendency to make things more difficult than they really are. It's not that difficult. Once you've hit the bottom, you're fishing. You're fishing on the bottom with a release clip. A couple things can happen. Fish eats the bait and snaps out of the clip. Perfect scenario and the rod bends over. Second scenario, you're looking at the downrigger rod here, the taller of the two rods, and you see the bite. You can either leave it there until he snaps it out of the clip, or you can snap it out of the clip on your own.